I want you to speak louder or speak into the microphone. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, when I uh, ran a charter school in, in uh, West Oakland, mm -hmm. uh, one of the first things that we did was to establish A through G courses for all of our students so that every student had that accessibility. And um, it, is, it is, in my mind, critical that every single child has accessibility to A through G courses, period. But I also think they need more than that. They need someone to explain that to them, to help them understand it, to guide them through that uh, um, process of, of understanding the importance of having uh, uh, a course a sequence that does allow them access to uh, university afterwards. It's not just enough to have accessibility. Sure. People have to understand it. Parents have to understand it. Children have to understand it. And what I came to realize very quickly in Oakland was that many of my parents and many of my students had no idea. Sure. Um, but uh, in that school, every kid took A through G sequence, period. We didn't allow anything else. Um, although this is a little bit off from your question, I would like to say I also think that young people really need the opportunity to have access to uh, positive uh, career and technology, uh, CTE pathways. No, absolutely, absolutely. And yeah. that uh, in an ideal world, what I would like to see is that um, uh, there would be this almost blending of CTE pathways and A through G courses that would allow students to navigate uh, through high school in particular um, with options and ideas and excitement about wh what's coming after they graduate from high school. Yeah, and, but, and, and for the record, I don't think it's um, uh, uh, off course, if you will. I, I think A through G and um, whether kids have access to A through G, um, the CTE component, like I said, not everyone's going to go on to four-year university, whether it's UC or uh, CSU. So, so the CTE component is, is is absolutely critical because other than that, what is what else is out there? You know, we don't know. You have to fend in the marketplace, and we right. know what the results are by far and large, statistically speaking. If you come from a, the lowest economic strata, um, we live in a very diverse society. But w with the advancement of technology, we do live in a society that punishes you more severely uh, if you have little or no education, which is a lot different. Back in the day, it was a generation ago, a few generations ago, just a high school diploma would suffice. Good union job, assembly plant, you're part of the middle class, you pay for your house, humble house, but it's your house. We very, live in a very different society. Uh, ironically speaking, with the advancement of technology, with more technology, life is much more difficult. And there's, it's more, highly more competitive. And because it's highly more competitive now, a lot of subjectivity is taken out, is, has been removed from the equation now, and we're driven by, obviously, uh, 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 by whether it's algorithms or metrics and data. And it works both ways. Obviously, we need that data to have a, a snapshot in the moment, real time, what's happening, so we can do course corrections wherever we need to do course corrections. So, um, but uh, you're not off base by no stretch of the imagination. Yeah. Ms. Sandoval. And just to, to get to your question about what we can do or what we are doing as, as board members, and that is something that we're focused on uh, in the development of this one system that serves all students. So it's um, about addressing the needs of our most vulnerable student populations, our subgroups. It's also remembering students with disabilities. I'm the liaison with the special education uh, issues, and uh, we have to always keep in mind that students are members of different groups simul simultaneously. Mm -hmm. We don't all fit into these nice little boxes. And I think of um, Member Sun's story of one teacher who cared for her, recognized her potential, and supported her. As a first generation college graduate, I was blessed with teachers and administrators who cared. But it shouldn't be up to chance or luck. Exactly. The system yeah. has to be supporting all of our students, all of our teachers, all of our administrators, our families. It, Ms. Sandoval, what you said is um, uh, it shouldn't be by chance, by luck. Uh, it shouldn't be by an outlier experience of, of a young man or young woman in the poorest school district, in the poorest school, in the poorest neighborhood, who somehow, some way, through hard work, perseverance, and you know, resiliency, uh, and good mentorship from a high school teacher that took him or her under the, her wing 
and she or, or he became the valedictorian in Stanford or Yale or Brown came in and showered a uh, full-blown scholarship. That's great. But then what happens to the 99% you know, of the rest of the kids and the rest of the population? And, and those are very real uh, uh, consequences in some form, way, or shape for the state and as a society as a whole. Um, so um, I just want to plant this with all of you that policy-wise, as you guys engage, and you guys are engaging with a lot of uh, 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 issues, that the 38% the, the issue is, is something that's real, obviously, because not everyone's going to be college ready through no fault of their own through no fault of their own. And you're right, Mr. Holliday, one thing is accessibility, access, and to have actually the real guidance. And hopefully, uh, poly as policymakers here collectively, we can work on, 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 on those uh, real issues and, 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 and provide the assistance that you need. And, and hopefully, it can trickle down to the, uh, to the, uh, the school districts. Um, you guys are very different now, because as a state board, you have much more power uh, than your predecessors ever had before because of the new paradigm shift with local control funding formula. So in this case, for better or for worse, I mean, there's much more uh, uh, expectation. Uh, I'll be one of the first ones to admit, and I think Ms. Ms. Mitchell asked a question, and I don't think she asked it in sort of kind of the same vein that, I was, that I'm thinking. I actually never knew what the school board actually did. I was always befuddled and confused. Well, what, what do they do, you know? <laughs> you know okay. Yeah, how do you fit? You know, what is your role, actually? And uh, all I would always hear is about some controversial text. The textbooks that about, and that, yeah, that, right? That, and that's when we hear about what you guys do. Short of that, I said, I have no clue what they do, you know? You know, because I know LA Unified School Board District, and everyone knows their own respective school district boards and their superintendents, and, you know, we know there is a, a, a a group of you, but there was never really uh, a, a clear understanding. But with local control funding formula, where there's a paradigm shift, you have a lot more power now, and therefore uh, responsibility. And um, um, and we have to work, you know, uh, close with each other in concert with each other, um, so um, we can be as helpful as possible ourselves. Um, I want to come back to you. Ms. Uh, Ortiz uh, Licon, because I, I, I feel like you wanted to say something more. I wasn't sure if we just moved on to Ms. Sun, but go ahead. No, I, you know, I, I agree with everything that's been said. I, I think that knowledge, access, and uh, preparation are key for our students. I do appreciate what I saw your uh, press conference at St. Yeah. Euro High, and I do appreciate what you're doing for students by bringing some of the much needed resources to some of the most underserved and under-resourced communities. We know that being in, in enrolled in AP and honors gives you that additional oomph on your GPA, which makes those students a little bit more competitive for some of the higher tier universities. And so it's only fair that we do the same in areas that uh, perhaps are academically starved by those courses. Mm -hmm. So thank you for your work. Yeah, and it is something that I'd like you perhaps to 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 tackle or or or, or engage in at least the conversation because um, if I go to a high school that has limited accessibility to AP, and as a result, um, if I do well and I'm resilient, uh, enable enough to navigate all the obstacles that you make reference to poverty parents who are not educated, whether it's two parents, one parent, or a grandmother, an aunt, or foster parents, um, homelessness, whether it's drug issues, in the house, outside the house, in and around the community, everything that we have all uh, witnessed and, 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 and experienced. Um, if you're able to navigate all that, and then when you apply, through no fault of your own, you're not getting into UCLA or Cal. Because with the weighted formula system, it rewards you if you live in a higher zip code. But you can't live in a higher zip code because you don't have the financial wherewithal to live in a higher zip code. So it's not about meritocracy, you know, and about this sort of concept that we have, you know, we did this on our own and it's merit-based. You can't because you can't act like you hit a home run if you're born on third base. Mm -hmm. And you have a system that's already set up against certain students in California that have a certain hue uh, and live in certain zip codes in, in, in California. 
So this is something that I, I think that I, I would ask for you to, to tackle because we know all the challenges. We know that even if we provided A through G, right, and the proper counseling, not everything's going to be perfect because poverty is, is, is not easy, you know. There's a whole variety of things that we need to work on. It's not just education. It's minimum wage increases. It's accessibility to health care. It's accessibility to mental health, you know, issues. It's how we deal with the homelessness. It's the sort of the holistic approach, you know. And uh, uh, um, so how we work, it's not siloed, you know, how we work in concert with each other. Because if we raise healthy, you know, socially conscious, aware, engaged, civic, minded uh, individuals, black, brown, Asian American, white, racially mixed, Native American, you know, uh, uh, we're a better state and our economy continues to grow even more so. So I will leave that with you. Any other questions or commentaries from the members? Seeing none, why don't we go to this? We're going to go to those who support the nominees here today, those who oppose, we'll get there in a quick second, and those who are neutral. So those who are in support of all four nominees, just one of them, half of them, or three-fourths of them, you know, come on up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members. Moira Top, on behalf of the California Charter Schools Association, pleased to support all four candidates uh, this afternoon. Uh, we have found all four of them to have an open-door policy. Obviously, at their core, they are educators. They're interested in education and therefore truth seekers. And so they uh, listen to all sides of an issue, and we very much appreciate that, and we strongly urge uh, their confirmation. Thank you. Jennifer Baker with the California Teachers Association. We're very pleased to support all four nominees today. Debbie, look, on behalf of State Superintendent of Public Instruction, Tom Torlakson, uh, here in Tom. support of all four candidates. Um, the members, the superintendent asked me to convey to the committee that the members individually and collectively have been instrumental in the increased level of collaboration between the State Board and the Department of Education. Further, they're deeply engaged in critical issues before the SBE, including the adoption of the LCFF evaluation rubrics and the update to the LCAPs and the efforts to align our state and federal accountability systems to ensure focus on multiple measures, continuous improvement, and support. They all provide unique and important perspectives that will ensure we have a comprehensive system of support that focuses on improving outcomes for all of California students. So we urge your confirmation of all four members. Thank you. Next witness in support. Martha Zaragoza Diaz, uh, representing the California Association for Bilingual Education and Californians Together. We are in support of all four uh, appointments, but especially in regards to the new, newest member of the State Board, Dr. Ortiz Licon. Uh, we believe that she has been accessible to individuals that have been wanting to speak with her on issues before the State Board, as well as really championing the issues of equity and closing the academic uh, gap, which is of importance to us. Thank you. Good afternoon, Marta Alvarez, on behalf of the Association of California School Administrators, also in strong support of the four nominees. Um, I would say they each have individual differences, um, perspectives, and experiences, but two things that they all share in common, they deeply care about students in California closing the achievement gap, um, also thinking about the whole child, not just test scores, but how can we get them to be college and career and give them the options that, that you discussed this afternoon. Um, and they also have been very um, active participants and contributors as part of the discussion on evaluation rubrics, how do we support capacity at the local level, and what is the role of the State Board of Education in providing that assistance. Uh, so for that, we um, at AXA support their nomination and encourage you to, to vote for them as well. Thank, Thank you. you. Next uh, person support. Jesse Ryan with the Campaign for College Opportunity, here today in support of another brilliant Latina, Dr. Ortiz Lincoln. We have seen her to be an incredible champion of education, but also a strong supporter of student issues and equity. We think she'll do a diligent job in ensuring that we are reducing remediation rates and better preparing all students for both college and success in life. Thank you. Thank you. Next witness and support. Yvette Kingberg, I'm the Executive Director of Youth Policy Institute Charter Schools. I serve about 1,000 students, most who are underserved, high levels of special, special needs students, high levels of students um, that have English as their second language. Um, but my most important role is I'm the mother of a 16-year-old um, who is attending an LAUSD public school of choice that was created as a result of the charter school movement. So I am support of high-quality schools on both ends. And I have to tell you, 
I came here today to support my precious and priceless friend, Felice, Felicia um, um, Ortiz Lincoln, because of the work as an affiliate that I have had an opportunity to work with her on, um, especially in terms of second language learners and um, um, making sure that they're successful in policy ab ab um, advocacy in Washington, D.C., and, and, and with many leaders throughout the, the nation. I have known Ting for the last 20 years of her amazing, amazing push for leaders of excellence in the charter school movement and outside of the charter school mm -hmm. movement with county offices of education. And just sitting here and listening to the two of you, I am now going to ask that you support all four of them because they so are- So you were only here for half of them originally. I was only here for half of them, okay. but as a mom of a 16 year old who's bilingual, biliterate, I am asking that you support all four. Okay. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. I'm actually here as a community member, foster parent, and um, I'm not here representing any organization, even sure. though I am. I'm sorry. I'm Ruth Lopez. Um, and so I'm, I'm here um, to ask you to support Felisa ortiz Licone, who I have known for the past couple of years, and I've worked with her professionally. Um, and, you know, everything that she's done, I mean, I don't want to repeat everybody, and we have a line here, but um, so I'm just asking for your support um, okay. for Felisa. I, and, well, everybody here now today, but okay. I came for Felisa. Thank, Thank you. you, then. Thank you. Next one is in support. I'm Marisol Rich. I'm with the San Diego County Office of Ed. I am the lead um, district administrator for career technical education for the juvenile court and community schools. And I came initially to support Dr. Ortiz Lincoln, um, both as an educator, as a parent, as a woman, and as a soon-to-be grandmother. I also um, am here as part of Bruce's tribe. You did not show up alone, mm -hmm. and you have a new fan. <laughs> and I wanna thank everybody in the room for the work that you've done. Felisa is a warrior, and not only a warrior, but a harvester. And because of her and her work, I now have and understand my voice as a citizen, my voice as an educator, and also my voice as a fellow warrior. And I am here in support of all four of our candidates. Thank you again for your work. Thank I you. am depending on you to do the right thing for my grandbaby. Thank you. Thank you. Next, next one is in support. Thank Good you. afternoon. My name is Heather McManus. I am a public school principal of a charter school in Los Angeles, California, actually in MacArthur Park Camino Nuevo Charter yeah, Academy. Okay. It's my district. I've been the principal yeah, there for yeah, 10 yes, years. Yes, actually, yes, um, yes, your yes, staffer yeah, was yeah. just at our school yes. talking to our kids because of the work that Feliza has done with us. I've known Had Feliza. I known this, I would have fast tracked yeah. this already. <laughs> I've known Feliza for the last seven years um, in two contexts. One, because she runs a program that develops youth voice um, and teaches kids how to understand the genuine need in their community and be a civic uh, and be civically engaged to to make change in that community and so our students because of this program reached out to your office um, on the issue of homelessness in our community in the greater MacArthur Park community I've also had the um, privilege of working with Feliza as a fellow for the National Institute of Latino school leaders and in that capacity um, we work to teach practitioners how to advocate to federal and state level government on policies that are important to education. So I highly recommend um, her nomination today. Thank you. Next witness in support. So I'm uh, Leticia Marquez Magana. I'm a professor of biology at San Francisco State University. And um, I'm Elisa's cousin. I've known her her whole life. So I'm going to do this quick. And uh, what I want to say is that Elisa has always spoken her mind. Her mind has always come from her lived experience and her generally heartfelt uh, caring and, and goodness. Um, and I think what I've seen in the last decades is that her scholarship is really emerged. And so I have a lot of confidence in her ability to navigate some of these issues because of not only her lived experience, her family experience, but her scholarship. And I think she listens really carefully. Um, that's one thing that I've come to really appreciate about you. And she asks for help. And that's what I don't see people often doing. And um, so she's already come to myself and my husband, who we work in different pipe pathway programs, and said, you know, I'm going to be hitting you up. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, well, we're there for you. And so she always, I think that's going to be, I heard, I listened to the rest of you, so I, I'm good, as a California citizen, I'm so supportive of you as well. All right, thank you. <laughs> Next one is some support. Good afternoon. David Nevin on behalf of the Long Beach Community College District. Uh, we would like to voice our support for Dr. Ortiz Lincoln. Um, 
She has been focused on student access and equity and has also been a very sounding board on the Long Beach Community College Promise. And for that, we would like to voice our support. Thank you. Any other witnesses in support? Any other witnesses in support? Seeing none, those in opposition. Seeing no opposition, I uh, just want one last round. Uh, any other further commentaries, questions from the members? I'm seeing none right now. Okay. Uh, Ms. Ortiz uh, Licon, Ms. Sun, Ms. Holiday, as well as Ms. Sandoval. If I can entertain a motion for the approval of these nominations uh, before the Senate Rules Committee to go to the floor. Madam Secretary, please call roll. We have a motion made by Ms. Leva. Senators Canella? Aye. Canella, aye. Leva? Aye. Leva, aye. Mitchell? Aye. Mitchell, aye. Runner? De Leon? Aye. De Leon, aye. Congratulations. You pass in the floor. Zero. Officially, that this meeting is adjourned.